Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at section 3 of the Purple Book. We're going to start off by looking at question 10 and 11, then we'll move on to the second set, which is 12 to 17. Questions 10 and 11 are a physics uh, set of questions, and they look at this diagram, this circuit. And the first question for question 10 is, what is the resultant EMF in the circuit? EMF is another term for voltage, and the thing you have to notice here is that the batteries are facing each other. So the positive terminals on each of these batteries um, are facing each other. And so uh, the movement of electricity from each of them will interact with each other. So essentially what you've got is you've got one battery pushing voltage this way and another one pushing voltage this way. The resultant EMF is just one minus the other. So you've got 24 volts in one direction from this battery and you've got six volts in this direction. Um, from the other battery. So the overall um, resultant EMF is going to be 18 volts. And that's answer B. Then number 11 is what is the current flowing in the circuit? Well, we have an equation to work that out and it's V equals IR. We know the voltage because we've just got that and we know that's going to be 18 volts. The current is I and the resistance is just the sum of all the uh, resistances in this circuit because they're all in series you can just add them up and you get six so therefore if you divide both sides by six you get a value for the current which is going to be three amps and that is answer c so we know um 11 is going to be c okay so moving on to the next one and i'll not draw out the diagram because uh, it's quite complicated we're looking at the chromaffin cell and so a chromaffin cell is something that uh, excretes neurotransmitters and you can see here this cell uh, excretes adrenaline. If we look at uh, the questions, question 12 is asking what type of cell is this or what is it doing? Well, we can tell by looking at it straight away because of the membrane bound organisms that it is a eukaryotic cell and there's no indication that it's going through either mitosis or meiosis. The answer therefore has to be B. Number 13 is which of the following is most likely? saying the cell is in interphase, prophase, metaphase, or telophase two. Well, given the cell is just undergoing its normal function of excreting adrenaline, we can say that it's an interphase. As I said, there's no indication in the diagram to suggest that the cell is dividing. So it's not gonna be in prophase, metaphase, or in telophase two. So the answer therefore for number 13 is going to be A, interphase. If we look at 14, it says, consider the following experiment. Chromaffin cells were exposed to an antibody that binds specifically to a protein that is located uniquely on the inner surface of the chromaffin vesicles membrane. The antibody was labelled as a fluorescent dye. After exocytosis and then endocytosis, fluorescence would be greatest on the, and then it gives a few options. So there's quite a lot of text here, but what it's really saying is where does that stretch of the membrane that makes up that vesicle end up after it's excreted the adrenaline? So looking at the pathway here, you can see that a vesicle um, undergoes exocytosis to release the adrenaline outside of the cell and then it's endocytosed and at the bottom of the diagram you can see then the pathway splits into two. There's an arrow towards the lysosome where the lysosome completely engulfs this vesicle and then there's another pathway that shows that the membrane joins up with the Golgi complex. So looking at the answers we know it's not going to be inside of the cell membrane because after endocytosis, this vesicle hasn't completely just joined with the cell membrane. So we know it's not going to be A. If we look at B, inside of the Golgi complex, well, yes, actually that would make sense. You would want to see fluorescence there because this antibody is on the inside of this membrane. And so whenever this membrane joins up with the Golgi complex, the antibody will be on the inside of the Golgi complex. We also saw that the vesicle went and joined with the lysosome membrane, but option C says outside of the lysosome membrane. However, it does say in the question that the protein is located uniquely on the inner surface of the vesicle, not on the outer surface. So you would expect it to be on the inside of the lysosome, not on the outside. And then if we look at D, outside of the mitochondrial membrane, and we know again, because of the location of the protein to which the antibody binds, it's not gonna be on the outside of anything. So we know the answer for 14 is definitely going to be B. If we look at 15 then, the synthesis of pre-prone kephalin is achieved by, and then it gives a few options. So I think it's easiest just to have a look at the diagram in this case, and you can see that it is 
um, right there in the top right hand corner, or left hand corner, sorry, of the diagram uh, with the ribosomes. And you can see that inside of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, you have pro and kefalin. And so you know there's a relationship between pre pro and kefalin, which is then converted into pro and kefalin. From this, we should be able to see that translation at the ribosomes on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum um, would be responsible for the synthesis of this pre pro and kefalin. So we know the answer for 15 is definitely going to be A. If we look at number 16 now, which says, according to the figure, the mitochondrion obtains energy from ATP, obtains energy from ADP, stores energy in bonds in ATP, or stores energy in bonds in ADP. Well, if you know how ATP works, you know the answer already should be C, but if we look at the diagram, we can see that there is a line going through the mitochondria from ADP, which is converted in the mitochondria to ATP. The bonds within ATP are where all the energy is stored, and so energy isn't being given to the mitochondria in that case. So we know that the mitochondrion isn't obtaining energy from ATP or ADP because ATP is not being broken down. In fact, it's being produced. So the mitochondrion isn't obtaining any energy. So it's not A and it's not B. We know it should be C because it stores energy in the bonds of ATP. And so we can rule out D and say that the answer for 16 is definitely C. And then for 17, which of one of the following is a precursor of adrenaline? Now with this, it looks more complicated than it is. What you should do is just find adrenaline on the diagram, which is on the right hand side in the middle. And just look at the pathway and follow the arrows backwards right to the top and you'll get to tyrosine. And you can see that the answer for this question, the basic precursor of adrenaline is tyrosine. So we know the answer is A. But to rule out the other ones, we know it's not going to be adenosine because it goes on to produce ATP, which isn't a precursor, it just provides the energy um, for the reaction. We know it's not going to be enkephalin because it acts um, in signaling within the rough endoplasmic reticulum and we can see that enkephalins within the chromaffin vesicle don't go on to form the adrenaline. And then we can also see that it's not going to be D, the phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase because you can tell from its name that it's an enzyme. It's not going to be a precursor of anything and it's responsible for the conversion of noradrenaline into adrenaline so we know it's not the precursor so we can say definitely the answer for 17 is going to be A. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.